All right, today we are at the site of Fort Donaldson. This is a U.S. Civil War uh, site. Saw, it saw battle in uh, 1862, during the height of the American Civil War, captured by General U.S. Grant. And uh, that's what we're going to go check out today. This is located near the town of Dover in Tennessee. This marker outlines why this monument is here and who it was for. This is uh, stop number one. They've got little signs for each for each uh, section that corresponds to their map. In this area here, there's a lot of uh, a lot of graves here in. In this section right here, these are unmarked graves for the uh, Confederate dead that were buried. We are at stop number two. You can pause the screen if you want to uh, read that. All right, for stop two, uh, you can see a little bit of an overview of the, the fort, which was originally 15 acres. Built over a period of seven months, according to that sign back there. And looking across this way, you can see the remains of some of the um, trenches along this area right in here. They've got a cannon up on on top over there. All right, we are at stop number three, and this is an area where you can see a little reproduction log hut made. According to this sign there was 400 of those and the uh, soldiers would sleep sleep in those and also tents it mentions. And those would have been all down in this area here. Alright let's get a closer look here. These little huts. Four. This is the Upper River Battery. And you have on this side some reproduction cannons. And on the other side, real ones. So let's go over to the other side. Water you see there, that's the Cumberland River. And about 10 miles to the west was Fort Henry guarding the Tennessee River. And this is the, the guns they had guarding the fort from this angle. Now as my dad pointed out, you could actually, where the river bends up, up there a little ways, you could actually see the steam coming from the steam powered ironclads as they came down the river before they even made the bend, so it was a good good indicator the, uh, the boats were coming. I want to draw your attention to this one on the very end. That, that little platform, that's where I was standing a moment ago. This is the largest of the guns they had. This is the Columbiad. They only had one of them this size. And Fort Henry down the, down the way, they had one as well. But theirs was damaged and they was unable to fire it. That's 
a very large gun. walk to some of the other ones so we can get a comparison for the longest time these guns used to be mounted just laying up in the grass for display um, it was only in more recent years that they they've mounted them down here so it looks very interesting to see how they would have actually been used and and mounted back during their time. Now these carriages that you see them mounted on, uh, Miss Nelma Crutcher was the one who arranged getting those up here. And if it wasn't for her, she, they would probably still be sitting in the grass up there on the hill. So our thanks to her for getting that done. But look at the size comparison compared to that Columbia that was at the end. Tell these are much smaller but still deadly. Here's a reconstruction of the powder magazine. There's the embankment behind it. those are the mounds up in this area here that it mentions on the sign stop number five this is where Buckner's lines would have been and this is where some of the heaviest of the hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat would have occurred You can still see some of the trenches over in that direction. Six. Now it's from this position that the uh, Union soldiers first took over the fort. Take you up to it, but we won't get on the earthworks there. But this is where the Union encampment was, and they successfully penetrated in this area right here. Now, this is the visitor center, or where it used to be. It's currently under reconstruction at the moment. We're not able to go in there and visit. They do have something temporarily set up in the trailer to the left. But yeah, that's where it will be once it gets restored.
stop number 10. This is the Dover Hotel, also known as the Surrender House. There's a few other numbers you might notice uh, we skipped. They're on the opposite side of the road from the main portion of Fort Donaldson. And uh, not, not a whole lot on that side, so we didn't go down that way. But here is number 10, the last on the tour. And also worth mentioning, there is no cost of admission to get in to see this. It's totally free. The sign talks a little bit about the 13,000 prisoners that were taken after the fall of Fort Donaldson. And after the surrender was complete, they were marched down this hill and onto steamboats heading towards the, the prisons where they were kept afterwards. All right, I'll wrap it up here. This has been a quick look at Fort Donaldson. Uh, make sure you come back when the visitor center is open. They've got a good uh, movie that they show in there and uh, some other artifacts and things that were found on the grounds. All right, until next time.